Okay, here we got a 17 year old kid uh, uh, that's going to have 1, 17, and 32 extracted. My take on all of this is always get the lowers out sooner than later, the uppers out later than sooner. Um, you know, we can discuss, uh, well, surgeons do this, surgeons do that. Surgeons have one crack at this kid, so they're going to try to get everything out at once. You have many cracks at them until you mess something up. Notice this supernumerary tooth around uh, number 20. That's 3-5 uh, for you boys and girls north of the border. Uh, 16 is present. Uh, it's completely uh, impacted uh, soft tissue. We could get it out, but I don't. Once again, I, I just think we'll wait. Uh, so here we go. Um, we're a minute into the, the whole thing of viewing that. First thing I'm going to do is take a 15 blade and go to bone out on the buckle, distal buckle, bring it to the distal of the second molar, and then I want to release uh, uh, circular incision. Um, you know, you can do you can do a full thickness mucogingival flap um, without uh, making these circular incisions with the with the uh, 15 blade. You just have to take a little more care when you're doing it. So basically, I've gotten uh, I've gotten my cuts done. I'm going to take a periosteal elevator, molt nine, and I'm going to release the collar of tissue to the around the second molar. Then I'm going to go right into the papilla. I want to go over the horizontal component of bone so I can get down on the vertical component of bone underneath the periosteum and I'm just going to push distally. So I'm under the periosteum already. I've got the flap reflected and uh, what's, it, what's it taking me? A total of 45-50 seconds. Um, take a Dean scissor. That's my all-purpose scissor. We're going to release to the distal. Distal buckle. There's nothing out there that's going to get get in the way and cause you some problems. Um, so here we go. We're going to lift up the flap, hold it back with a Minnesota retractor, and have my dental assistant get in here and see if we can uh, see see if she can get that, uh, that hemorrhage out of there. Uh, she isn't in the spot that I'm wanting. There we go. Finally, there's the tooth right in back there. You can see it poking out the distal buckle of, uh, of number number 18. Uh, three seven for you folks uh, north of the border. I said, ah, what the heck? You know, let me give this a try and uh, see if I can wiggle it out with a 301 elevator. I know it's probably a pretty futile effort, but I do see some movement, so I'm pretty uh, pretty sure this thing is uh, going to be a relatively straightforward uh, uh, extraction. Um, so you know, uh, working and going nowhere fast. Uh, I said, okay, do what you know you've got to do and pull out the handpiece. This is a, a Midwest Shorty two-speed motor. I keep it on the high speed. That's uh, 5 to 30,000 RPM um, with an HP 559 burr. Uh, the 559 burr is the same thickness as a 301 elevator, so uh, I've created a trough. I'm going straight down the the clinical crown. I'm not attempting to reduce vertical height. Extremely important. Don't reduce the vertical height of bone. Um, so the 301 elevator going in there, I get some movement, but um, once again going nowhere fast. Notice how quickly I'm moving from instrument to instrument, technique to technique. I'm not standing around for 10-15 minutes trying to trying to get something that's obviously not working to work. And you know, boom, boom, I keep going in. Cogs will be. You can use a Murph crane pick in this this uh, situation. They're very helpful. Uh, what I found out here is, well, geez, you just didn't uh, didn't uh, put a deep enough purchase in. So I can continue to do something that's not working, or I can uh, I can try. Uh, doing what's right and that's to increase the depth of, and uh, the size of that purchase so I can get the Cogswell B tip in and uh, relieve this rascal of his uh, tooth number 17 three eight. Um, so here we go notice I just drive in there I'm not concerned uh, I'm not going to go through the tooth I'm not whacking anything else get in there get that Cogswell B point into that purchase and boom, here it comes. We're not even at four minutes on this extraction. Total time.
time in the video right now is about five minutes. So we've got the tooth out. Now we've got the tooth out. Some people say, okay, we're done. Now there's some follicle. There's other stuff in there that we want to make sure is, um, is out so the healing um, occurs as best as possible. So taking a, a curette, I'm, I'll scrape around with that, not just blindly. Um, you want to make sure that you're uh, going in the right spots, not damaging anything. Grab this uh, piece of follicle with a hemostat. A hemostat's different from a needle holder. You shouldn't be using needle or uh, hemostats to suture with, just as you probably will find it difficult using a beefier needle holder to pull off a piece of tissue. So uh, I'm going to irrigate with normal saline. I like normal saline. It's isotonic. Uh, sterile water is hypotonic. Um, you know, you can use either which one. Which one. Uh, some people use uh, Paradex. Um, I mean, once again, you're putting stuff in that probably shouldn't be there. Um, but uh, anyway, I want the body to, to fight for itself. Um, if you've got to give it some help, maybe the Paradex. But uh, the sterile water, you know, my take on that is you could be removing some minerals. So here we are at, at 5 minutes and 30 seconds. We've got the entire side closed up over there. I didn't suture. I didn't feel it was necessary. Uh, the tissue was laying down nicely. So here we're going to go from the distal buckle, make an incision to bone, come to the second molar, and um, we're going to then go ahead and do a sulcular releasing incision along uh, the second and first molar. Uh, if you flip that blade over the way you see me have it and bring it kind of up, you better be real careful and make sure you've got good control of it because you can, you know, it can flick loose and you can whack something that's not supposed to be whacked. So I've got my sulcular incision done, um, cut through the papilla, and I'm going to take a molten imperial steel elevator, the pointy end, and once again release the tissue around the neck of the second molar, go right into the papilla area, release the papilla, and now the big thing is to get across that horizontal component of bone, get down on the vertical wall of the mandible below the periosteum, and you're just going to push directly back. And um, when you when you see you see how I'm pulling that back and pushing, I'm pushing it, and it's pulling right back. Um, when you get under that periosteum and, and just do that that pushing movement to the back, like you just see right there. You, it, it's amazing that feeling of the tissue just releasing um, in our uh, hands-on class. It's, it's kind of cool to watch somebody do that for the first time and see that that tissue just goes whoop, you know, and it's, it's out of the way and you go, wow, geez, it's only taken me a minute or a minute and 20 seconds to reflect this tissue and everything's looking good. Now you want to uh, evaluate um, the extension of your flap. Uh, there was a little tension toward the mesial of that first molar, and if you want to do a vertical releasing incision, do it, but don't do a vertical releasing tear, um, poor form. So um, I think I've got enough space here. Maybe I'm going to take it back to the distal a little bit more. But now if you notice, we can see stuff, and there isn't a lot of tension on that mesial portion of the flap. You know, hey, uh, yeah. Every boy has a dream, you know. Try the 301 elevator in this situation. I said, now ah, what the heck, let's just give it a shot. Well, I knew it wasn't going to work, so um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time monkeying with it. But there's the tooth. So what I'm going to do is take that 559 burr, and I'm troth, and I'm going down the clinical crown. All I want to do is, is go vertically along the crown. I'm not reducing that vertical height of bone. Very, very important. Um, so here we are about 8 minutes and 30 seconds into the procedure. I've got 17 already out. I'm trothing 32, 4, 8, and um, you, can, you can see that uh, I've got a pretty substantial troth. I, and I'm not being timid about using this handpiece. Um, you know, the high-speed handpiece is sexy. This thing uh, can boldly go where 
that high-speed handpiece can't go. The high-speed handpiece's advantage is that uh, it'll cut through uh, enamel a lot quicker than this one will. It'll also cut through other stuff that it's not supposed to quicker than this one will. Um, but the biggest advantage, I think, though, the high-speed contra-angle handpiece, 45 degree, is in the maxilla. Um, it takes a little bit of work to get that uh, straight handpiece up there. But anyway, so here we go with the Cogswell B. I've got my trough. Boom, two out. It's uh, now uh, 10 minutes and 30 seconds into the entire video. Uh, 9 minutes and 30 seconds, just as I suspected. Um, we are missing a root tip. Actually, we're missing a root. So, um, I know that there's a pretty substantial follicle in there. Once again, going back in with the um, the curette and getting rid of that follicle. You know, here's a, here's a case that if I wouldn't have looked at the tooth, I wouldn't have maybe known that there was a root still in there. And um, if I don't curette things out, um, that follicle stays. The body has to heal up around it, has to resorb that follicle, and sometimes that doesn't happen in a follicular cyst forms and in a very small percentage of time it, it goes to something even nastier than a cyst. So um, I'm grabbing onto the follicle with the hemostats and trying to pull the whole thing out. So I've got the I've got the root as well as the follicle here. Uh, see if we can visualize those things, get the dental assistant to vacuum that off there, so you suction it off. So there's the root. Uh, this other portion over there, that very fibrous tissue. That, by the way, is, is something that is uh, similar to what the, um, the sinus membrane looks like. It's a very fibrous sort of a, of a piece of tissue. So, um, you know, that's, uh, it's pretty thick, that uh, the follicle as well as the sinus membrane. Now let's see if we can uh, reconstruct this uh, tooth, take that broken uh, root fragment and stick it uh, back on the tooth and looking around and I go wow that matches up pretty good a pretty good puzzle puzzle fixer here uh, so I'm very satisfied that we've got all the tooth and uh, let's go back in and just make sure that there's nothing that's loose in there making sure that there's nothing that's sharp um, clean everything up and uh, I think I'm noticing a couple of areas that have kind of a sharp edge on them that could create a problem for this patient down the road. So, you know, what what instruments do I have? I've got the curette I could use to uh, file off something, um, a bone file, a rongier, or I, in this case, I said, well, geez, I've got, uh, I've got my handpiece sitting right there. Why don't I just use that and, and round off those sharp edges of bone that uh, could create a problem for the patient down the road. Um, not so much back here in the third molar area, but uh, in some of the other areas, you may uh, uh, rest a denture on something that's uh, that doggone painful for the patient. So here we are. We're in 13 minutes and 10 seconds, uh, or 12 minutes and 10 seconds of the procedure, and we're flushing out the area with normal saline. Copious amounts. Get all that bone dust out of there. We're looking. Now we're going to look and see, hey, is that flap lay down, or does it fall? Uh, come away from the teeth when we um, are uh, pulling on the lips. So it looks pretty good to me. So um, I'm not going to put a suture in that bad boy either. Uh, if you look, you might be able to, to visualize uh, uh, some of the buckle cusp sticking out uh, up there. Now, this is a soft tissue impaction, and um, so I think it's really important that you decide where you want the tissue to to uh, to tear versus allowing the tissue to tear where it wants to tear because I guarantee you that if you tried to take this tooth out you could probably get it out but the tissue is going to tear up there and torn tissue doesn't heal as quickly as incised tissue so go ahead and take a 15 blade or in the maxillary third you can use a 12 blade I don't recommend a 12B blade 12B meaning both I think uh, for both sides of the blade being sharp. Um, but anyway, so I just take a molt nine and kind of fiddling around to see what I've got there. Uh, 301 elevator in there, and uh, once again, um, we're getting some movement, so I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. So um, let's uh, just see if the tooth is coming out. It looks like it's coming now. 
it's elevating out there and bing boom it's done uh, let's go ahead and do the most important step right now and that's to take a peek at it and make sure we've got all those root tips now it's not so critical in these impacted thirds because they haven't had an opportunity to be uh, decayed and, and infected from a carious uh, lesion issue and necrotic pulp but um, you want to try to get those root tips out if possible if you leave anything the, in this case there were no root tips but uh, in a third molar situation that would probably be the best time to leave a, a tiny root tip it, uh, especially if you can't visualize it um, so uh, we got all the root tips out I don't like to do that I've probably I left uh, five or six that I know of uh, in the last 20 some years but anyway we're cleaning stuff up we're looking around and um, so here we go with the gauze. Once again, we irrigated. Uh, so it's uh, coming up on 15 minutes, 14 minutes for treatment, and hostility.